the title of the three sessions that I'm going to be taking, the three lectures, it's called presentation. And I don't quite know what that means, but we will see, we will add some meaning to it. And if you really ask me, uh, you know, what is a real title for this talk? Because I don't know what title to give it. During the, um, when was it, August? Yes, we did the training in August. Yeah, during the August session, when we did the training for the coordinators, we had given it a very special name, and we had called it Yellow Car in Blue Light. And I'm acknowledging that I didn't know, I didn't know what title to give it. So, you know, at the end of this talk, uh, it'll be great if you can help me in uh, giving the right title. Okay, so that's a, a homework for you, or that's a quiz question for you, or that's an exam question for you. The exam question is that you will give a title to this particular presentation by the end of these 90 minutes. Okay, all right. So that's one of the assignments. There are many more coming. So keep your notebooks out and keep making notes because there are many assignments coming. Sometimes I don't even know, so you keep track of the assignment because I'll remember later and ask you for it. All right, here we go. So there are two agenda items, okay? One for today, where we get to do the work on you, okay? We get to do the work on you, because still we don't look at who is making the presentations or who is doing the communication. There isn't much scope. I mean, if you don't examine who is doing the communication, then there's no power, okay? So we really want to inquire into and do the work so as to be able to redesign or have a new you be present such that we can move on and have, be, have you be effective in whatever communication that you're committed to. On Saturday, we will actually get to practice, okay? We will put you on a flight, and what the details of the flight are, we will tell you in a little, little later in this uh, session today. We'll prepare you for the Saturday session. And um, so those are the two things, okay? So first, today we get to work on you. Two is you get to practice on your presentation on Saturday. All right, now both these agenda items require practice, okay? And if there's anything, if there's one thing, one thing and only one thing, if I were to leave you with between this lecture today and the two lectures on Saturday, the only, 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 only thing I want to leave you with is there is no alternative for practice. As a kid, when I learned to walk, I didn't even know the word practice. But how I dealt with gravity, which was out to make me fall all the time, was to practice, 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 make friends with gravity, and it's the same gravity today that allows me to walk. Then a little later, I learned how to ride a bicycle. Same thing. Everything I knew about walking, I was trying to do on the bicycle, and it didn't work, till at some point in time I practiced and practiced and practiced, and I got access to balance on the bicycle, and if you ask me today to give you that balance on the bicycle, I cannot. The only thing I can do is get on the bicycle, I'll hold your bicycle and push you, and then when you fall down, I'll be there again, and push you, and fall down, and push again, and at some point in time, you'll get balance, and then at the end of it, you'll say, I did it. Okay, so there's nothing, no alternative, there's absolutely nothing that can replace practice. So if you're committed to fabulous communication, if you're committed to powerful communication, you really need to do the practice. Okay, as adults, as grown-ups, we somehow forget. One of my most favorite advertisements on TV used to be with uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Okay, so on the screen, all you see is a dim light, and you hear a little bit of a sound which goes something like tuck, 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 and after some time, you hear a mother's voice in Marathi saying, Sachin, go to sleep now. Okay, that's Sachin Tendulkar. Mother has to actually ask him to go to sleep because all that that guy keeps doing is practicing. Okay, while other people would be doing, even till he retired, you know, they, and I don't know what he does these days, but I'm sure he misses the practice. I'm sure he's doing work and he keeps practicing. But there's no, no substitute for practice. So one of the things that I normally do uh, when I'm live with you is at this point in time, I would normally ask, are you convinced or should I keep going? But I think at this point in time, I'm just going to stop and assume that you're convinced that there's no substitute for practice. So practice, practice, practice. So the opportunity today will be for practice. The opportunity on Saturday 
and between now and Saturday is going to be for practice. Okay, so I invite you to that, welcome you to that. Okay, I want to acknowledge uh, a, a, few, uh, a few people and a few things. Um, the Hunger Project is a document you can get on the web. Just go punch in on Google The Hunger Project, you'll see the documents for that. I got trained by an organization called Landmark Education, and I want to acknowledge you as quote unquote the students and quote unquote audience. Okay? I just want you to know that at some point in time, the difference between you and me is going to disappear. The student and the teacher will not be there anymore. The speaker and the audience will not be there anymore. Okay? At the same time, I just want to acknowledge that we can only do it because you're there and we are here and we are participating in this entire effort together. Okay? So this game is on because you are there and I'm here and we get to play together. So I want to thank you and acknowledge you for that. Okay, so we, you know, most of us are here, um, we, we really, all we're doing is sharing some of the experiments that we've been doing with our teaching. That's all we're doing, okay? Uh, it came by actually being on the court, learning, working with thousands and thousands of students. On an average, in a semester, we have uh, 700 students that we're teaching, and we've been teaching this course for the last 10 years now, so, and every semester. So one semester we have 700, another semester about 350. So on an average in a year, about, um, about 1,100 students, 10 years, 11,000. So okay, that's the kind of numbers in the background. And so what we did in the first year versus what we do now uh, has evolved over these years. And uh, one of the most beautiful things about this course that we teach is that there are anywhere from 10 to 15 faculty colleagues who teach this course together. It's across departments. And uh, you know, so we, when I'm standing over here and saying whatever I'm saying, it's because I know that you know, the 15 people who we've been working with and the 550 plus faculty at IIT Bombay who are behind us you know, th these are the, the, the this is, that's the, that's the ground we stand on, okay? So I just want you to know that it has come from learning from the students and, you know, experimenting with the students, and that's what we're going to be sharing, okay? And, um, but I require your permission to be able to share this, and I'll tell you why I require permission, uh, because we'll be really doing some brain surgery today, okay? So, um, really, we're going to be doing some brain surgery. Okay, so uh, I think coordinators already know, they have already been warned about this. Um, insurance is not required, but I definitely need you to sign a paper that says, yes, you have permission for brain surgery. Okay, so that's said in a lighter tone, lighter note, but I just want you to know that whatever we're going to be doing today is going to be brain surgery or nothing. Okay, so you'll have to choose which one it's going to be. I'll leave it to you. I invite you to actually participate in the brain surgery. Oh, by the way, uh, you might think it's your brain. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so the nature of the work we're going to be doing today, okay? So typically in lectures, you would expect some knowledge. So I'm sorry, no knowledge. Some information, sorry, no information. You want something from me, I have nothing to give. So what are we going to do today? Okay, what we're going to do today is just bring forth, just bring forth, just bring forth whatever is already there where you are. So you already have it. I don't have to give it to you. All we're going to do is bring it forth. You know, balance on a bicycle is not something somebody gives to you, right? It's already there. It's just you have to access it and practice, 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 and you access it. So we're just going to open up a few of those uh, doors which have not been opened before so that you can peep in. And if you like what you see in there, go for it. If you don't like it, there are other doors to open. All right, and then at the worst, if you get nothing, at least you get entertained with some stories, okay? All right. What is also available, what is also available is that every cell in your body could reorient itself to a new you. 
this can be a little worrisome for some people. Let me say it again, that every cell in your body could reorient itself to a new you that is available. You will have to choose between entertainment and the new you. You will have to choose whether you are going to get onto the bicycle or not. Okay? So, that is the name of the game. All right, so I am going to just move on and assume that you have made a choice and I congratulate you on your choice. Okay? All right, let us begin to examine how do we behave as human beings. Okay? What is in the background? What happens? How do we deal with things? By and large, human beings are doing what is doable. So, we are going to take a look at some of the things that we deal with which are doable and it is in each one. If you are human, you are tempted to do what is doable as opposed to, I am sure you have heard of the famous lamppost syndrome. What it is, is there is this person here, okay, this person here, he is standing under a lamp sometime in the night and he is looking for something here. He is looking and he is looking and he is looking and then his friend who is passing by comes to him and says, hey, what are you doing here? So, he says, well, I am looking for my key and he says, okay, I will help you find it and he also begins to look, cannot find it. So, after some time he says, okay, where did you lose it? He said, I lost it there. Where? Here. So, he says, okay, then why are you looking for it here? He says, I am looking for it here because the light is over here. Okay, so, that is human beings, ladies and gentlemen. That is you and me. We are looking for the keys, not where they are, but where the light is. Okay, now, you might think that is silly and I want you to know that human beings are so silly. Absolutely, delightfully silly, human beings, you and me. Somebody at some point in time said, God does not have a sense of humor. And then somebody said, what are you talking about? God made human beings. And that is supposed to be funny? Okay, all right, good. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so, here we go. So, we know we, we do the, doing the doable versus doing what is needed to be done. Okay? I think most of us are stuck in doing the doable and I will give you an example for this. Okay? A lot of times when we are looking at doing a project for a student or the student is looking at a project to be done, one of the things they look at is okay, what facilities do we have and what time frame do we have and what is doable and let us do it. Okay? So, that way it is doable and you do it. Whereas, if you step into the domain where you do not look at what is what are the resources, you do not look at what is the time available, you actually begin to look at what is really needed and wanted and then begin to engage in it, it is a different game. Now, you should just know I put it as a footnote over there, but the second one, okay, it demands courage and it demands thinking and that is the invitation for the game. Okay? We really need to be looking at what is needed and wanted and have the courage and the thinking process to actually then step into it. Okay, so, um, let me just ask a sim for simple example because we are doing this course, right? So, let me ask this question, why are you doing this course? Can I actually interact with some people and find out? Yeah, let us do that. Let us find out why you are doing this course. Okay? All right. Geetam University. Medak. Hi, sir. Hi, how are you? You are very fine, sir. And right. this is the most memorable moment to talk with you like this. Oh, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. So, answer my question. Okay? The question is, why are you doing this course? 
So the first uh, reason is I am an assistant professor teaching for many engineering graduates yes. and myself I am an OSS scholar sir. So in the next few days uh, I have to go with uh, my papers, thesis and everything. That means my life for the next few years is combined with this all the technical communication. If I can learn anything from, the, from this and now at this point I will learn many things sir. So how to write an abstract, how to listen something, and uh, how to get a summary of a paper. So it is helping out me uh, to carry out my research work very easy. And I can uh, tell my students how to identify a problem to carry out their uh, projects, their small assignments, and also, uh, uh, to avoid the plagiarism at the stage of uh, assignments writing only. All right, yeah, excellent, okay, excellent, good job. Yeah, very good, very good. So thank you for holding that as a context for yourself. Yeah, please give a big hand to her. Please give a big hand. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, one more person. Thank you. Maybe uh, with this we get a better approach to put forward things. Like if you, are, you want me to write an abstract now, it will be easier for me to do it. Although I've got, undergone it, but now the approach will be different and it will be much easier to do it. Excellent. So what you're saying is it'll enable you, it'll actually help you in writing better and make the life. Okay, very good. Okay, same. Okay, very good. Yeah, everybody's ready over there. All right, very good. So one of you, please tell me, one of you, please tell me, why are you doing this course? Okay. First of all, IIT Mumbai is a brain name and I really wanted to know how the faculty are like. Second, technical communication, as the name suggests, is an appealing subject and I wanted to know what you think it could offer me. And thirdly, I really needed a certificate. All right, excellent, excellent, that's, that's very great. So um, yeah, certificate is a good thing. See, a lot of times I have this conversation with my students to say, when you say degree or when you say certificate, uh, what exactly does it mean, you know? It's like a degree is the degree to which something is hot, for example, you know, temperature is measured in degrees. So there's a degree to which you're in my development as a human being. So that's great. I mean, and I, I'm glad that you actually said that the certificate and you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to have a certificate and quite another uh, to be actually living that training such that people around you uh, would relate to you as somebody who is a source of that kind of a uh, training and that. So what I'm hearing from uh, most of the centers is that there's a huge commitment that you have uh, for being able to serve the people around you. You know, you are already in a place where you're serving. You're serving the youth and you are listening for, you're looking to see what might be uh, done in the area of training and development for yourself such that you could be of greater service uh, to the youth and to the, you know, to the, to the people that you interact with and the people you contribute to. So I just want to congratulate all of you for being that kind of a resource already. Okay, you. you're that kind of a resource already. So I want to add to this. Sorry? I want to do my PhD, but I was directionless. Okay. After, uh, after attending this program, now I am very confident I will complete my PhD on time. Fabulous, that's fabulous. And I'm sure there are many like you who are, who are looking at the next level of their own training. Some people looking at masters, some people looking at PhD. And I very strongly encourage you to stay in communication and see if there's anything that we can do to expedite, anything that we can do to uh, forward that, you know, you should stay in communication and we'll, you know, do whatever we can. Okay, so please stay engaged in the conversation of what is it that we need to be doing, working on ourselves, what practice, what training, such that we can continue to be of service to others. Okay, so thank you for already having that in place and uh, I appreciate it and it's very inspiring. Okay, so thank you very much, right? Thank you. thank you. All right, good. So that actually takes away some of the conversations I was going to have. Okay, we did some preparation for it and I think that part is handled, all right? So let's just take a look at uh, the next part, which is uh, typically, okay? Typically, when you're looking at students, when you're looking at students, mostly people would want to learn to get better marks, which is a good thing, but sometimes the entire intent gets devolved into just the marks. Somehow I want to be able to get the marks, somehow I want to be able to get the high grade, okay? 
a lot of times it is somebody who's not good and we need to go into a remedial action. So all we're doing them, you're in the wrong place, you don't have the aptitude for it, but we will do whatever we can do so that we can do some remedial action over here. Okay? Both of these are not necessarily empowering. Both of these are, in some sense, they have a certain negativity associated with it, a certain something's missing over here, and we need to do to you know, make up for it. Okay? But let's take another example. Okay? So if you look at watching TV, okay, most of us watch TV. Okay? So when you're watching TV, do you have the capacity to watch TV? Absolutely. I and mean, what, what kind of a even question is that? Of course I have the capacity to watch TV. The only problem I could possibly have is that my remote doesn't have a battery. Okay? So once the battery is in place, remote is working, I can sit back on the sofa and watch TV. No, that capacity is already in place. In fact, so much capacity I can sit hours and hours and hours and I wouldn't even know that I've been watching so much TV. However, if I suddenly come and tell you that, listen, tomorrow you're going on an expedition to climb Mount Everest. Do I have the capacity for it? No, I don't. But that doesn't show up as a deficiency or doesn't show up as a remedial. It shows up as if I'm committed to it, then I'll have to go through the training, which is what I'm hearing when I, when I asked you why are you doing this course. You're not doing it to in, in any way for deficiency or for remedial. You're actually doing it because you're committed to something and you clear that there is training available, there's coaching available for it, and you're participating in it, so which is fabulous. Now, we really need to have that be available as an outlook, as a context for all the people that we touch, all the people that we train, all the people who come in contact with us. Let's take a simple thing like attendance, okay, for example. For students, the current context is that it is a requirement. If they don't fulfill on the requirement, then there are consequences, okay, for not attending. Do they come to the class or do they come to work with you because they love to participate? I don't think so. I have my doubts, okay. And so the real difficult question is, by the way, if you look at attendance as a requirement, if you look at attendance as a requirement, then on our part it is very doable. Put that as a requirement. If they don't do it, they don't have 80% attendance or 75% attendance, well, then they'll not get to get the certificate or they will not get the whatever, the exam or they will whatever. Okay, there are some consequences to it. The moment you put that requirement for attendance, they will come. Very doable. Very, very doable. We do it. We do it all the time. However, the more difficult question might be, which needs to be done, which is the needed, it's not doable, but it's needed to be done. What can we provide for the students so that the need for taking attendance becomes redundant? That's a difficult question. Okay? And that's what I'm inviting you to. The question then is, what is the context we are given by? If you really look at this, okay, we impose the attendance requirement because you and I have already had some experience with how irresponsible students are, how the generation of today is more interested in playing games on the computer or on their iPads or on their cell phones, but not necessarily in the knowledge that we want to provide. You know, we are bhandars of knowledge, right? And we want to give it to them and we come here. But these students of today, I don't know what to do. If you don't put attendance, they will not, at least for attendance they come, otherwise they will not come at all. That's our context, by the way. You and I don't see it. But you know what? We've already written off the future generation. We've already written off the future of India. I mean, there's enough things happening around you it's not a very empowering context. You, you and I know that, and we've learned to live with it. So students, we have a similar context. We relate with students a particular way, and as long as you and I keep relating with them this particular way, 
yeah, attendance seems to be the only thing that we'll be dealing with. And we will not actually engage in the question of what can we provide for the students so that the need. So this is a different context. This is a different question. Is it easy? No, absolutely not. Does it guarantee failure? Absolutely yes. You might have to fall from the bicycle 30 times and at some point in time you will lose count of how many times you have fallen. You stay true to this question. At some point in time, the seed in the soil will take root. So what's the question? Okay. So, so what is the context? Here's the question. The question is, what is the context that you and I are given by? If you don't recognize it, if you don't acknowledge it and alter the context, transform the context such that our questions are then consistent with what's needed, then we begin to play the game. Otherwise, there's no game. Let me give you an example of um, context in uh, culture. Okay? So this is an example which I learned from somewhere. If you take a large hall, Okay, with the carpet, large hall with the carpet, no chairs, nothing else. Large hall, only a carpet. And you bring in a Japanese person and you tell the person, sir, please sit. The Japanese person will ask you, where should I sit? Because in the carpet, there's such a huge room. Which, which part of the room do you want me to sit? Because there's so much place. Should I sit in this corner? Should I sit at the back over there? Where do you want me to sit? Because I'm the first person here. Where do you want me to sit? So that's for a Japanese. That empty room, big hall with the carpet. He's asking you, where should I sit? Now you bring in a person from, let's say, USA. And you say, sir, please sit. The Japanese is not there. Huh? Japanese, that was a different story, a new case. Okay? Again, empty room, nobody there. Uh, a person from USA comes and you ask the person, sir, please sit. The person will say, where should I sit? Because there's no chair over there. Same room, same hall, same carpet, same invitation. One person's got, culturally, the person has got such a huge place, doesn't quite know where to sit because this person can sit anywhere. Whereas for this other person, there's no chair over there, so there's no place to sit. Such a big room, but there's no place I can sit. Culturally, okay? So culturally, this gives you, you know, a flavor of the context. I'd like for you to just quietly read that, and then after a minute or so, I will read it for you. Please go ahead and read it. Okay, I'm going to read it for you. This is the context that you and I as human beings are living in. This is where we live from. Okay? This is something that is happening in our life. This is happening on our planet. Okay? I'm going to read this. This is from the document, The Hunger Project, source document by Werner Erhard. The details of the URL are given. You're welcome to visit. Hunger persists. Each and every day, 24,000 people die as a consequence of chronic, persistent hunger. Between 750 million to 1 billion people live in conditions of poverty so severe that they are unable to provide, unable to obtain enough food to meet their daily requirements. This is not the kind of hunger that makes headlines, as in a famine, but a silent holocaust that continues day after day, month after after month. This is on our planet. This is during our lifetimes. So you should actually, you know, just get that it's not that people are dying because there's not enough food. It's happening because it lives for us like that's how life is. You may feel bad for a few moments, and then after that, you continue with life because that's how life is. There are other examples. Okay, One of the other examples, for example, is war. When I was a small boy, and at one point in time, I was a small boy, never mind my gray hair now. I used to think, okay, 
I used to think that all adults are idiots. Yes, I'll say it again. As a kid, I used to think that all adults are idiots. Why? Because if they had any sense, there wouldn't be any war on the planet. All right, I would just want you to share the tragedy of it. The tragedy is that now I am that adult. The same, all adults are idiots. I am one of them now. Politics, can you ever have life without politics? Come on, that is how life is. All right, let us not talk about hunger, let us not talk about war, let us not talk about politics. Let us just talk about bathrooms in India. They always stink. You know, in most of the buildings, you do not need to put up a sign that says where the bathroom is. You just have to smell and you will reach it. All right, so this is the time when you need to pick up a partner. Okay, so at your remote center, you should pick up a partner. This is partner one, this is partner two. Okay, so at your center and the coordinators, please help me with this. Please make sure that there are two people who are partners with each other because we are going to do some sharing work now. So it requires that you actually have a partner. Okay, so would you please set up a partner and I will just go from one center to another. But in the meantime, the coordinators, please make sure that you have set two people as partners. Okay, please go ahead and do that now. Sushila so Danchan, where is this? Kolapur, Kolapur. Okay, good. Kolapur, how are you? Hey, I like you guys. You're very well dressed. Everybody's got a tie and all. I, sh I wish I had brought a tie myself, you know. Okay, please, everybody has a partner? Yes, if you can see. We have already arranged ourselves uh, to two persons on a bench. Excellent. So, will you please say hello to your partner? Say hello, partner. Shake hands with your partner. Hello, hello partner. Excellent. Excellent. Now, all the centers should be doing this, okay? Everybody, partner, shake hands with your partner. Say hello, partner, one more time. Okay, this is Federal Institute. Federal Institute, yes? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Do you have a partner? Shake hands with your partner, so I know you have a partner. Shake hands with your partner. All right, excellent. Now, you two, make sure that there is no bag in between. Go sit next to each other. <laughs> Go sit next to each other. Remove this bag. All right, good. Sit next to each other. Shabash, very good. Good job. Very good job. All right, good. <laughs> hey, more partners are coming. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Say, okay, next one, last one, please. University, BDT College, hello. All right, very good. So, say hello to your partner. Shake hands with your partner. Yes, sir. So, we are, we are, we are, shake, we are shake handing and we are partners. We are 11 members. Okay. So, if there is odd number, if there is odd number, please make a group of three, okay? Don't leave a person alone. If there is an odd number, please make sure you make one group of three. Anyway, you are our partner already. I am not there with you to shake hands with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, make sure you there is a group. All right, okay, good. All right, so now uh, we are going to do a personal inquiry, okay? We are going to do a personal inquiry. And in the personal inquiry, what we are going to do is, it is going to be in your notebook. So if you do not have a notebook, please get your notebook. Please get your notebooks and a pen. We are going to do some work. RVS College, Coimbatore. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, very good, very good. Yeah, please get your notebook ready. All right, so the work to be done is this, okay? I am going to tell you some stories first. Ready for some stories? Okay, I am going to tell some stories first and then we will do the notebook work, okay? So, Everybody knows that about 500 years ago, earth was flat. Everybody know that? You can't say it was not flat. 500 years ago, it was flat. Why I am saying that? Because everybody on the planet lived in the reality that earth is flat. 
So all ships would go, tuck, 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 they'll go up to a certain point and then they'll come back. Why they would come back? Because they didn't want to topple over. Everything we did on the planet was consistent with the reality that earth is flat. And you know what? Earth was flat. Were you there to see it? No, I was not there to see it. But you know what? Evidence proves that earth was flat because people were behaving that way. That's story number one. Story number two. There's this famine which is going on in Ethiopia. Okay? And some uh, American TV network is picking up the story from Ethiopia where the famine is going on. There's a lot of starvation, a lot of death happening. And there's this little boy who's about six years, seven years old. Uh, who's, who comes on the TV, on the camera and says something and there's this American woman who's sitting in the USA and she's watching this TV program, this coverage on the famine in Ethiopia and she gets very moved by this child. There's something about this child that she's very moved by. So she actually gets into the details and you know, find, does the inquiry and finds out who that child is. And it turns out that the child is an orphan and because of the uh, famine that the, both the parents and the family has perished and he's an orphan. So she actually does the paperwork to uh, adopt this boy as her son. Okay? So after a few months, the boy comes to the home, the new home in USA and the mother is there to welcome him as a adopted son, the uh, child is not knowing what to do, what not to do. Uh, so he says, uh, what should I do? And the mother says, uh, no, there's nothing to do. He says, no, no, but you tell me something I can do for you because I'm here, you brought me here, so I must do something for you. If something must be there, I should be able to do for you. The mother says, uh, no, you are here as my son. So the little boy says, I don't know how to do that. Please tell me and I will do it. Okay, so that's story number two. The third story, it's about a fish. There's this fish which has uh, been having some trouble with its eyes, can't see very clearly. So it goes to the doctor, the doctor gives some you know, eye drops to put every night before going to sleep. I don't know whether fish sleep or not, I don't know, but anyway. So you know, put some eye drops uh, to improve the uh, vision, the clarity of the vision. Um, doesn't work, then goes to the, another doctor, the doctor says you need glasses, gives thick glasses. Okay, I'll wear glasses, but you know, there's still not clarity, can't see too clearly. So that's how life is, you know, life is begin to now happen like that, that's how life is. Ah, there's, there's a song in Hindi, I don't know if you've heard it, but it's, it goes something like, Jeevan mein aaye hai, to jeena hi padega, jeevan hai agar zeher, so you know, that very tragic, to peena hi padega, okay, so it's like, that's how life is, so you, that fish is moving around, pretty resigned to life, this is, my eyes are bad, I can't see clearly. Then one day this fish is traveling, it's not traveling, I mean it's basically uh, swimming near the surface of the water and uh, there's a strong gush of wind that comes and this fish gets thrown outside the water, okay? The fish gets thrown outside the water and for the first time this fish is outside the water. All its life the fish has been in the water. Okay? So this fish gets thrown outside the water and then just in that flash of a second it looks down and it sees, oh, water. And the next, sees, next, next thing that the fish sees is, oh, the water is dirty. So gravity does its work, the fish comes back into water. The design of the fish is that it has to live in water, but there is a difference this time. The difference is, that fish is not out to 
medicate the eyes or wear thick glasses, it basically now recognizes that there is water around it and that the water is dirty. So, it goes instead to one of these hardware stores and gets a string and gets like a ring which has a filter on it and takes this string with the filter and starts doing that this way, that way, around it. So, as far as the string can clean the water, the water is clean and the fish can see clearly. Now, sometime after some time the fish gets tired, right? So, when it gets tired, stops doing that and the muck begins to start coming up, coming in again. But you know what? The fish is above the water, about being in the water. Okay, so three stories. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some notebook work. And what you need to do is <laughs> so just caution, okay. The hard work begins now. So wear your seat belts, difficult inquiry ahead, just cautioning you. So this is the notebook work, okay? It's a personal inquiry which you need to do in your own notebook. Here are the three stories that I said. One is that at some point in time, 500 years ago, the earth was flat. The other one was about the Ethiopian boy. And the third one was about fish in water. Okay? So the question that you need to be looking at in your notebook is, what are the, that's how life is for you in a flat earth. You go up to a certain point and then you come back. You go up to a certain point and then you come back because the earth is flat. Okay? So that's first inquiry. Second inquiry is you are a daughter or you are a son. I'll talk about a little bit a little later about the mission. Okay? But as far as I'm concerned, you are a daughter or you are a son to a certain mission. The question is, are you going to do it or are you going to be a daughter or be a son? In doing, somebody can tell you what to do. In being, you'll have to discover it. And that's the beauty and that's the challenge of the game. And the third one, fish in water. So you need to look at what's the dirt in the water that you as a fish are living in. Okay? When you can actually distinguish water around you and that the water is dirty, you can actually begin to clean up. All right? So these are the three questions I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Actually 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Okay, I'll give you 5 minutes. 5 minutes to do this inquiry and then we get to share. Okay? So then we do a little bit of interactive work. So I give you five minutes now. Please go ahead and start on the inquiry for these three questions which are up in front of you in the screen. Okay? I'll stop. I'll come back to you in five minutes. Thank you. The coordinators at the centers, you have done this exercise during your workshop. Please help in making sure that it gets done. Do not do it for them. They need to do it themselves. Okay? But please be there and hold the space so that the work can get done. Okay? So please go ahead. Best wishes to everyone. Go ahead. Five minutes. I think, uh, you know, this is something that a lot of you would be dealing with confusion. This is okay. I just want to acknowledge that as you're doing this inquiry, there may be a lot of confusion and I just want you to know it's okay. It's expected. Okay. Very good. I may be rushing you a little bit, but that's okay. There's some, a little more work to be done. What I'd like to do now is uh, thank you for doing the work and we want to take you to the next level where what we're going to do is we're going to actually have you share with your partner. Okay? That's why we set up the partners. Okay? So say hello to your partner and take two minutes each uh, to discover uh, <laughs> that whatever you are thinking is not so personal after all. Okay? This is very common humanity that we are dealing with, that some of the ways we relate with life are common and all of them are given by a certain context. Um, you know, so why don't you talk to each other for maybe a couple of minutes each 
and the person with uh, longer hair goes first. Talk to your partner now, please. Center coordinators, please help in the sharing with the partners. This is something that they're doing for the first time, probably. So please help them in sharing with each other. From the notebook work you have done, please share with each other. All right, very good. So uh, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to give some of you an opportunity to share. All right, PhD College, Coimbatore. Okay, who would like to share? Would one person like to share what you and pa your partner have been sharing? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I was sharing with the coordinator regarding my uh, third part. What is the dirt in the water that you are living in? The world is very materialistic huh. and we are in this place where people are very materialistic. Wow. That's what I was sharing. And the other one, as a professor, I've got my duty to enhance the communication skills of my students. I have to make them to be very confident to develop their communication skills and in whatever place they go, they have to communicate properly. Excellent. I salute you. Well done. Well done. Absolutely well done. Well done. Okay, very good. This is Motilal Nehru, Allahabad. All right, what is it that you're sharing with your partner? Please share with us. Sir, I, you know, we have shared with us that uh, uh, in case of a first question that you have asked that uh, if we are living in a flat earth, then in this case, we are thinking that uh, we are not in a safe environment actually and there is no scope for expansion. And we are going uh, alone without keeping in a competitive environment. So there is no scope and we are thinking in a very low environment and uh, we are not uh, playing a game or we are not playing uh, with, with our life uh, in a very positive manner. Oh. So there would always be, uh, might be there would be a lots of negativity because uh, we are dealing with the, uh, dealing with only a very, uh, very normal type of thinking process uh, rather than going for a very creative thinking or a very creative environment process. That's why uh, this is uh, this is the difficulty in living in a very flat earth actually. Fabulous. You know what? Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. So I just want you to know that as you're sharing, everybody in the studio over here clapped for you. Okay. Thank you very much. I actually opened up something for me to say, you know, human beings are living in an environment which is very, you know, we worried all the time. What would it be like for us to live in a place of freedom, you know, just amazing. Okay, very good. Let's move to one more center, please. Okay, Goa College. Hi. All right, so one of you, please share. That's how life is for you on a flat earth. Uh, I, we have uh, felt here that there is a note of acceptance about how it is, and there is no spirit of critical inquiry because we take it for granted. And the way life is for us around us is, we see scenes of corruption, global warming, the possibilities of war looming large, there is malnutrition and uh, varying climate. That is the way we have perceived the first question. The second one, shall I go ahead? Um, no, I think you should, no, I think here's what, okay. Um, I, here's my request to you. My request to all of you at all the centers is to please, this, the time I'm giving you is not enough, okay. There isn't enough time. So what I'd like for you to do is, uh, tonight before going to sleep, before going to sleep, don't sleep otherwise, okay? Make sure that before going to sleep, you write these down. You want to complete this inquiry because this is an opening for something and if you don't complete it today, it will be a lost opportunity. So please do not go to sleep tonight till you have completed writing down, not just thinking, not just in your head. You actually want to write it down as to what it is and at some point in time, I'll actually create an opportunity where you can upload this on Moodle so that we can actually collectively then share it with everybody who's participating, okay? So let's just do that, okay? So I want to give you a big hand. Thank you very much, okay?
Fabulous. I want to set you up for Saturday. There are some other things I need to do, but I'll probably work through them on Saturday. But right now, I have to set you up for Saturday. If I don't set you up for Saturday, then we won't have a game to play. OK? So let me just set you up for Saturday. So we had two agenda items for today. First one, we get to work on you. Now, you know that we just not even touched the tip of the iceberg. OK? So we just opened up something in that inquiry. I really invite you, request you to do the work that's required. That's a part of the practice, practice, practice that we had talked about. Okay? This is the work you are doing on yourself such that you become, you have access to being a resource for people. Okay? So keep doing the work. The second one is to actually have you practice a presentation. You know? So it's actually go out and play on the cricket field. Okay? So um, I'm going to set that up now. So the setup is actually about following instructions. Most of us human beings do not follow instructions. We are horrible. We are not designed to follow instructions. We listen to an instruction, interpret it in our own mind, see what is convenient, and then do it thinking we are following the instruction. So human beings are not designed for following instructions. One of the examples I think I'd given during the coordinator's training was that when you go for parachute jumping, the actual jump, the actual jump with the parachute is not more than 15, 20 minutes. Okay? But they, before you go on to the flight to do the parachute jumping, you spend eight hours, eight, eight, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours. Eight hours for packing your own parachute. You make a mistake, you do it again. You make a mistake, you do it again. You make a mistake, you do it again. You, they, you, you have to pack your own parachute. They will only provide you instructions. If you don't follow the instructions, you packed your own parachute. When you jump from the airplane, who will you blame? And in any case, it doesn't matter. It's too late by then. <laughs> All right? All right, so this is about following instruction. Actually, you should just know that how, you know, I, I'll tell you, on Saturday, we're going to have a lot of fun, OK? Because you will see all of our humanity when we actually just ask the person to follow an instruction and they will not follow it. Okay? It's going to be so funny and it's actually hilarious and it's a lot of fun. So I look forward to actually uh, doing that on uh, Saturday. So come ready, okay? Come ready with a lot of um, readiness for fun. All right. So here's the ticket, okay? So everybody by now, you've seen the video, you know what the ticket means, okay? The ticket means that for you to participate in this particular flight, for you to be on the flight, you need to have a ticket. And how you get a ticket? is you take one journal paper. And I think I'm told there are 15 papers that are, have already been. So you can choose any one of those 15 papers of your choice. It could be in your own subject area. And after reading that thoroughly, you may spend two hours, three hours on that paper. And after reading that thoroughly, understanding it thoroughly, you actually take the essence of that entire paper and present it in five slides. How many slides? One, two, three, four, five. Only five slides. Not, no sixth slide. Only five slides. That's a part of the instruction. You do a sixth slide, your ticket is invalid. Five slides. That is the challenge. You might fail at it. That's OK. But follow the instruction. There will be a sixth slide, but the sixth slide will have a quiz. It will have a quiz question. So the, the context is this. Okay? The context is that you would like your audience to be able to answer this question by the end of your five slides. So what we will do is you will have one slide which will have the question and then it will have four options A, B, C and D. And one of them will be the right answer. 
So the audience will decide, they've gone through your presentation, they now understand the subject or don't understand the subject or the paper, and then they will be asked to choose A, B, C, or D. You have to design that, and then one of them is the right choice, and then each center will say, okay, A, or B, or C, or D, and we will from here monitor how many people, how many centers got it right. And that feedback will be given to the speaker. So the speaker will know, oh, actually the right answer was B, but most of the people said that the right answer is C, so man, I really messed up in my presentation. Okay, so it's not about them passing, okay? It's not about them having done, if they didn't do well, ah, bad, students don't understand. I was the great speaker. No, no, no. If they don't pass, you didn't do a good job. That's the game. All right, and I'm inviting you to that game. So, five slides. Sixth slide will only have a quiz question with four options, A, B, C, and D, with only one correct answer. Make sure that the quiz is designed to be intelligent. Don't ask some trivial question. One time somebody said, how much is a megajoule? I mean, you didn't need to attend that lecture to answer what is a megajoule, okay? So make sure that the questions, the question is consistent, the quiz question is consistent with the paper and that the four choices that you're giving, that it requires a little bit of thinking to say which is the correct answer, okay? One slide with a question, the sixth slide. The sixth slide will have a question for a quiz to the audience with four multiple choice answers, A, B, C, and D. And I just requested that make sure that the level of the question that you're asking and that the answers are consistent with the level of intelligence that is expected in your audience. This one is a difficult one. The presentation should be completed within 4 minutes 55 seconds. 4 minutes 55 seconds. Plus minus 5 seconds. This one you'll really have to practice, okay? Now I'm told that you already have a PPT that has been made for the elevator pitch exercise, okay? Uh, you're welcome to use the same, but the context is different, okay? The context is not that of an elevator pitch. The context is that of a quiz question that they need to be able to answer. So what I recommend is, after studying the paper, if there was one thing that you wanted your audience to get, which is actually the answer to the quiz question, you design that first, you design the sixth slide first, and then work backwards to design the first five slides. Okay, so that's my suggestion. Uh, you can do it any way you want, but that's a suggestion. Okay, and then please, when you come on Saturday morning, make sure that you bring the file with you as a PPT file and as a PDF file. For any reason, if PPT doesn't work, avoid any animation. Animations are not working, okay? So please do not Try any animation, just have it be as simple, graphic, without graphics as much as possible. And uh, one of the things I tell my students when I'm teaching is that be ready to present. Now most of you are professionals, you're our teachers, so I don't need to go into that. But sometimes when students come in, you know, shorts and chapels, you need to let them know that when they go for placement, they can't go like that. They have to dress up because there is an audience to be honored. It's not about them, it's about the audience to be honored. So for that you need to dress up properly, then you need to dress up properly, okay? So that's that. I think, uh, okay, by the way, so any part, any small, 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 any small part of that instruction not followed means the ticket is not valid, okay? Now, with you, there are no consequences here, but with the students, we usually play a different game, okay? But I'm not even gonna go there because I'm assuming that each one of you will have done the work and that there'll be no invalid ticket. So I don't need to deal with that, okay? All right, um, hint for winning the game. You wanna win this game? There's a hint, this is the hint. Share the selected paper at least with at least two people before you even start designing the slides. You wanna share, you wanna have it be communicated. This is so as to be able to be of service to them, okay? So when you're sharing that paper with someone, you're actually contributing to that person. Make sure you take permission from that person, okay? You don't just, just can't, can't go, hey, you have to listen to me, no. Say, listen, I have a paper that I've reviewed, I'd like to share it with you. Can I take your five minutes of time and you know, share it with them? 
So do it for at least two people, and you'll have a very good sense then of what to have in the slides and what not to have in the slides. Okay? So you might think something is very important, but it may not be clear at all. So in having this sharing with two people, you get clarity on that. Okay. So I just want to also emphasize there's a new you. There's a new you that's going to begin to emerge. And that new you recognizes the need as a human being to take on a coach. Great players always have a coach. So do not even attempt, okay? Do not attempt getting the flight ticket all by yourself. Get a coach. Somebody will say, who's a coach? Where's a coach? Where am I going to get? Well, coaches are all around you. Are you going to relate with them as one? Okay? So they're all around you. It's time for you to recognize them. It's time for you to honor them. It's time for you to make promises to them. That's one of the things that the coach does. It takes promises from you. And then you honor your promises. Don't say, oh, now coach will make me keep my promise. No. You keep your promise to the coach. OK? All right. I don't think I have time for questions, concerns. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'm sure you have a lot of concerns. I'm sure you have lots of ifs and buts. So you're welcome to drop me an email. All right, so if you could please make a note of that. And if you have questions, concerns, please write to me. And I will do my best to answer before Saturday. OK? And uh, what else is there? There are two things to practice Okay, by Saturday. One is the ticket itself. And second is, I'm going to open up a conversation with you for what is the mission that you're on. OK? So you want to start looking at articulation of your mission. I didn't have time enough to do that today. We'll deal with it on Saturday. But you want to start looking at, if you are on a mission, if you were to articulate a mission for yourself, what is that mission? OK? And that opens up something very powerful if you do that. All right. And the last thing I want to do is uh, I want to give you, uh, so with the center coordinators, please give a sheet of paper to all the participants. Okay, and participants, please write your name and RC ID on this sheet of paper. And this is to be submitted to the coordinator after the exercise. And I'll just ask you to complete this exercise in two minutes. And here's the exercise. What do you claim to have learned today? Okay, so please take that half a sheet of paper, write your name, write your RC ID number, and write two, three things that you have, you claim that you have learned. If you don't claim it, it's gone. If you claim it, it's yours. Okay? So take two, three minutes to please write that, and then I'll see you on Saturday. If you have any questions, once again, please write to me by email. Dr. Saab Kore Institute, Kolapur. Hi. All right, very good. So uh, please tell me, yeah, please tell me. What is it that I'm asking you to do on the half sheet of paper? What are you going to do? What, what do you claim to have learned today on the half sheet of paper? OK. Have you learned something? We need to uh, write it. OK, very good. Have you learned something? Yes, sir. OK, how many, if you have learned something, raise your hand. All right, excellent. So that's what I'd like for you to write. So please write on that half a sheet of paper. Thank you. Next center. All right. Where is this? Varangal. Alori Institute. Yeah, we learned that how to communicate and uh, how we can infer information uh, from the student. Okay, very good. So you should write that. You should write. So whatever you have learned, write it on that piece of paper. Claim it. It's yours. You learnt it. It's yours. Mount Zion, hi. All right, very good. So, do you claim to have learned something today? Yes, sir. We have learned a lot. Uh, in the, during the morning session, we learned how to write a letter for fees waiving and how to write a letter for reviewing of a journal second time and how to communicate to the students for the various cadre from uh, lower, middle, and uh, excellent cadre students. And, uh, uh, really, in the afternoon session, we have learned how to think and innovatively 
and how to deliver the lectures innovatively, how to uh, think laterally, those things we learn, sir. Okay, very good. So, you know that the learning happened in your chair. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so, through the uh, storytelling, through the, uh, telling some uh, story, we can make the students to listen. Very good. So, now I want you to know that you learned. Yeah, we learned. Yes, because you did the work. Yes, sir. Good. So, write that. You claim to have learned. So, it's yours. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. So, please do that. All right. I don't want to say bye-bye, but I have to say bye-bye, okay? So, bye. I'll see you on Saturday morning. Thank you.